Hey guys, I'm here. It's really windy. It's very cold. It's about 55 degrees. The clouds are I hear the train. Actually, I just saw it moving. So maybe they figured it out. I'm rushing over to where the volunteers are supposed to go. Really, really, really windy. Hello and welcome to Spirit Forest. It was a very windy day, so it was very hard for me to record and talk to you at the same time. So I'm going to do some voiceover here. Um, I'm getting my information because I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the area and I'm getting my information from some of the pamphlets that they've handed out there and um, some books that I've got of the history of this area. I will credit my sources as much as I can. Some of the pamphlets don't have um, where they're getting their information from, but I will try to credit as much as I can um, in the description below. So let's get started. Um, this is the fun part. I love history and I love the history of this area. It is so fun to read. Um, I am in Como, Colorado. Uh, Como started as a little tent town built by the railroad to house thousands of workers laboring on the line. The railroad brought hordes of adventurers, drifters, and opportunists eager to reach Leadville during the height of the silver boom. Some entrepreneurs stayed, built stores, and provided services, but little remains to the boom railroad junction that was Como. In its time, the town was boosted with a large roundhouse, which you'll see here shortly, a depot, the 43-room Pacific Hotel that was burnt down by a fire in 1896, saloons and shops.
For those of you that don't know where Colorado is, it's located kind of in the central area of the United States. I'm going to talk about a couple different cities here. Let me zoom in. Uh, the roads pretty much follow the train. Um, we got Denver, we have Como, Breckenridge, and Leadville. Those are the three or the four towns that I'm going to be talking about. So let me zoom in just a little bit more. Okay, we're going to start in Denver. What we're going to do is we're going to take the train route. This is a very, I mean, it's on the roads we're currently right now. Sometimes a train might have taken a little bit different curve. But the train goes through these little mountains here. And you kind of follow that blue line. Then we go up and over Kenosha Pass. There's Kenosha Pass. And down into Como. Now we're going to work our way to Boris Pass. So now this is where it gets really tricky. Um, if you notice, see these mountain ranges right here? That is the Continental Divide. You gotta go up and over that Continental Divide. What is Continental Divide? Any water that rains on this side goes into the Atlantic and that side goes to the Pacific. So now we need to get to Breckenridge. So now the train um, heads over into Breckenridge. And what we really want is Leadville. That's where all the silver is at, is in Leadville. So now we need to get around this huge mountain range we see in here. And look at that, there's a 14er, 14,000 foot peak inside there. So we can't take a train up and over that. We got to go around it. So we're going to go up and around. There we go. Now we're up and around and we're heading our way to Leadville. Let's talk a little bit about the history of this area. In 1859, Colorado Gold Rush, gold was found on Terrial Creek, which is right near Como, Colorado. In 1860 to 1863, placer mining peaked in South Park. If you don't know what placer mining is, that is where they pan for gold um, in the beds of the rivers in the area. In 1861 to 1865, you have the Civil War. In 1867, most of those small, the, the small little placer mining stopped. Some people weren't doing that anymore. 1871, the Colorado Silver Strike. That's a big deal. And also a big deal in 1871 is coal was found in South Park. This is huge for the trains and the mining in that area. 1872, Denver, South Park, and Pacific Railway superheaded. In 1877 to 1879, Leadville Super Silver Boom, or Super Silver Boom. <laughs> it's a huge deal in Colorado and what's going on in Leadville. 1879, Denver South Park and Pacific Railway reached the town of Como. Yay! 1880, 24,000 people lived in Leadville. This is the silver capital of the USA. This must have been crazy there. 1882, Denver South Park and Pacific Railroad reached the town of Breckenridge. Love Breckenridge. Lo I ski there, so I, I love that town. Now it's more of just a ski town. In 1884, Denver South Park and Pacific Railroad reached Leadville over Borse and Fremont Pass. Those are like some sharp turns, some scary times then. I might be talking about that later. In 1885, the peak coal production in South Park. Again, coal is huge, so that's why South Park became very popular. 1889, Denver South Park and Pacific Railroad became known as the Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison Railroad. I just kept changing the name. In 1893, the Sherman Act demonetized silver. Colorado's hit very hard. This really hurt the people around this area. So you'll notice a lot of changes from 1893. 1899, Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison Railroad now changed their name again to become known as the Colorado and Southern Railroad and remained so until 1937. And again, 1937, it gets really sad because that is when the railroad shut down in South Park and over Boris Pass. Um, and because, well, cars were becoming popular then. If you look at the history, cars were really pop. People wanted to drive. They didn't want to take the railroad anymore. In 1952, the Boris uh, Railroad bed converted to an auto road on the Breckenridge side. In 1956, Boris Road bed be converted to an auto road on the Como side. So you can actually, even today, you can drive from Como to Breckenridge. And I think it's about 20 miles or so. Um, it's on a dirt road. 
I wouldn't take your sports car, you know. Uh, but uh, but it's a really pretty drive that I would recommend to do um, going over the path and you actually follow the tracks of the train as you go through it. So if you get a chance, try that drive. The early residents were Italian immigrants who named the town after a lake in Italy, Lake Como. Lake Como is a beautiful spot in Italy and they felt that this was just as beautiful. The coal mining had brought them to Como, operating the railroad and the mining, the coal necessary to run the trains became the primary employment in the area for many years. I will link to my video from last year regarding the train. I talked a lot about the train and just the town of Como um, in my last year's video and I don't want to repeat what I said last year. So this year I did something a little bit different. I wanted to tour the little houses in the area. Some of these houses are really preserved and what I really liked about them was their little stoves and every, every one of them had a different looking stove and I don't know what it was but I ended up finding my way through all these little cute homes and looking at the way that they lived way back when. They actually had one of their kitchen stoves working and running and it was a wood burning stove and you know that saying if it's too hot get out of the kitchen? Um, it was really true. That kitchen must have been 90 degrees to 100 degrees. It was so hot in that kitchen. Thank you guys for watching. It was a lot of fun here at Railroad Day and uh, hopefully I'll be able to film the train working next year. So thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.